little bit about me. I own Bronco with Becky, my wife. Uh, I've been doing this for so long now, it seems like a lifetime in itself. I'm also a regular speaker at these conferences, and if you find my speaking is totally rubbish, please tell them they'll stop inviting me and I can relax a bit. So there's been a buzzword kicking around for, well, I feel for the last five years, but it's really become prevalent just recently that SEO 2.0, this is the future, this is the big thing now. And I think that SEO has always been evolving, that we don't have these big leap forwards. But I think the reason why a lot of people have been going on about 2.0 is things had changed. You know what I mean? We used to just have these 10, black lit, 10, black, 10 blue links and 10 listings on Google. Now we've got universal search blending in there. We're getting news feeds and video and images. Um, and we've seen Google put the toes a couple of times into social media with Wave and Buzz that both failed. Um, Wave was an awesome product. I, it's just before its time a little bit, I think. And then Google Plus came along. And I think the biggest indicator from Google Plus was that the way that they really didn't want businesses in there. They only wanted human beings in there. And I think that's a big indicator of which way Google's going. It's moving more from a business to business model, very much to a business to consumer model. Google Wallet and Google pay, um, payment systems. I think we'll see a PayPal system where we can actually get money into Google and that will hold our funds. But the big thing from an SEO point of view recently was that fella there, Google Panda. So one thing that hasn't changed, Google has been saying for years and years and years, ever since I was an SEO, build websites for users, not search engines. I think realistically up until about a year ago, they were just shit at sorting this stuff out. And even though they were saying it, all the rankings you saw was because SEOs like me were building stuff just for search engines. We didn't care about humans, we just wanted to get them in and get them out. Now that the search engines are starting to get a bit savvy, they can see our upstream, they can see our downstream, they know where people are coming from and they know where people are going. And then this fella hit and he was nasty. Um, he hit in the USA and we were like, way, we'll get some data on this. And before we could even get the data in it, it'd come to the UK. And I was really happy that one of the sites I was working on actually got hit with it. It meant that I had real data. I knew what we'd done. I knew where we were. And this could, I felt that because of that, I, that I was in a really strong position. I was wrong. It was, it was one of the worst experiences in my life. All of the updates I'd seen in the past were nothing in compared to what this did. Um, and realistically, that's the one that got me. The site was over affiliated. It can't have been had weak content pages because we had proper editorial staff. We had editors from site CNET working on the product. These were real good journalists. But we certainly over affiliated it. Ad links got from the sites. No, the sites that were linking into this were other editorial pieces. It was an absolute cracking website. The guy who owned it had spent hundreds of thousands on the infrastructure, making sure that he had the best of class at the time. Was it poor for the user? No, it was absolutely. If it was a bad product, they said it was a bad product. If it was a good product, it, they said it was a good product. They used microformats correctly. Technically, it was absolutely sound. The biggest problem they had, and I mentioned it in the last session I did, was that the over-affiliated problem that they had was they had their own in-house tracking system that they blocked in robots.txt, but the way that it bounced through was a 301, a 302, the meta page had the no index, no follow on there. They still followed it, and they still put 60,000 iTunes songs, among other offers, on that website. It boosted their page count from around 40,000 to around about 180,000. The 140,000 was just absolute crap that Google said was on our website, and it wasn't. So that was a big problem for us to solve, and it's a problem that you could easily fall into as well. So I started looking at different ways, and Ajax is your friend on this. That's what Panda looked like. I picked two sites that I thought uh, everyone's taught. I don't want to put up a client up there, and I didn't want to put up someone on site who could be in this room. So I picked on Heow, and review center, and you can see it's like, this here, this is um, search metrics data, uh, one of the products I actually use internally to see if what sites are doing, because we get a lot of people come to us and say, oh, we've never done any SEO on our site, we're awesome, we're a really good site, we just want to be taken to the next level. You look at search metrics, and they did that about eight months ago, and they got heavily penalized for something, so it, 
clients don't always tell the truth. But it's, you see, there's a dead cat bounce for you as well there. You see that got peaked on that one. Um, and you look at it, and if that was your business, it's just mortifying, you know what I mean? It's like, it, my client, like I say, when they got hit, they had figures like this, you know what I mean? A hundred and odd thousand page views a day down to 20,000 page views a day. That's massive. So what's still important? Good titles, good headings, and unique content. It's so 1980s. It's, I tell this to people now, and they're like, bullshit, there's some secret out there. It's like, it's not, the secret is, do this, and it will work, you know what I mean? You still need good site structure, you still need good coding. Speed is becoming even more important. I banged on in the last session a lot about Cloudflare. It's a caching service. They make a copy of your site on their very, very fast servers. They can feed it out very quickly. Um, and make sure your pages are linked correctly. I think Matt Cutts just actually did a video recently about anchor text equity passing from A and B links. Um, if you've not seen that, just Google Webmaster blog, I think it's on at the moment. Um, on page, it really has to be worthy for visitors. I'm 99% sure that they're looking at bounce rate analytics data now. And while they're doing that, it means that if you're just sending people into the site, and even if you're fulfilling them perfectly and sending them out to the best deals on the internet, it's still going to trigger a criteria that Google doesn't like, that your site is just a conduit site, a site for moving people from A to B. Google don't like them, they never have, they've never liked affiliate websites. They don't like the fact that we do better jobs than they do. If someone searches for online bingo or online poker or online casino, Google believes that they should be able to give the users the best experience, not us. Off page, it's still heavily weighted to links. Links are golden. Um, but it's changed, the landscape's changed. One time over, you could go out and buy 10,000 online casino links, push it straight into a page, and bam, you're there. A, pricing's gone up an awful lot on them. People know the value of links, um, and also networks are springing up left, right, and center, because content is cheap, domaining's cheap, hosting's cheap. The only thing that's expensive is the bloody links on the pages. I think they'll move away from it. At the moment, they can't, it's still there. They have seen a lot of websites that don't even rank for their brand at the moment because of it went over penalization. Something that I do internally, um, this is one of our internal tools, that, but you can mash this up yourself. It's just a, a standard graphing thing. We take all the competitor data and we insert that into the, the outer ring is the industry, the inner ring is the website that we're actually looking at this moment in time. And this is the one that got penalized basically for over cooking on their anchor text. And you can see that 49% was basically straight anchor text. Um, everything else they were under on apart from that one big heavy one. Uh, the market average there, you can see that they were way out of the average. So it, while building that on a weekly basis, we can work out what links the person's got missing or what links that the person is going down the, the track on. We told these guys three months ago, you're heading for a crash, you're heading for a crash. And we're, we're heading for a windfall, we're gonna be number one. They went straight out through the top. They just didn't stop, they just couldn't put the brakes on. Um, and it was, they just didn't have the budget to keep mixing up the brand and the phrase. So really look at this area. So your branded links get branded and keyword. So if my brand, well my brand is Bronco, so I should be making links like, uh, Dave Naylor's Bronco, you know what I mean? Bronco's UK SEO company. Uh, I tried Bronco's SEO services. Bronco's SEO services are awesome. Get the phrase, get the keyword, get the anchor text in there, but get the brand. Brand is so important. It's hard to do in this industry. There's not many, as we said previously in the day, that have done it well. If you're getting a good 60, 70% of your traffic coming in on brand search, you've made it. Um, a couple of little points on links. If it's really quick and easy to get, it's most probably worth rubbish. I think Jason Duke, wherever he is, 
he had like a what to do a scoring factor once and the quicker the easier it is the more pain it will cause you long term if you spent 20 grand on a link you know for a damn fact that you've done all due diligence that everything that if you need to remove that link the things are in place if you put a link on someone comment on someone's blog because it's a pr6 you don't know what the next thing's going to follow you you know what I mean you might go there and it's like best online casino the next 20 links after there might be all to pedophile websites and crap like that do you really want to be a part of that network so the the harder you go for it the more the quality the less the quantity really is important but like i say pricing on this stuff is absolutely excessive one thing that we've started looking at now is was the website hitting panda because they hold the page rank but it's obviously panda in google's eyes is a negative signal it's something that they feel that we don't like this website and we don't like anything about it um, be smart with your data it's like rankings are just moving all the time you know what I mean it's like long gone are the days where you can say I want to dominate the search industry for these 10 keywords bam there you go locked in they're looking at users how they move around the internet Facebook opening up the um, the rights to actually buy poker ads and stuff like that on it that's awesome it gives us Facebook back traffic back into the casino world look for look for your long tail look for the breaking stories look for news areas stuff that you can bring other people from different keyword sets you've got to get a blend and you've got to keep them on that site okay so 2.0 um, be much more holistic of it. Use many different techniques to get traffic there. Google organic is awesome, but it shouldn't be the only string to your bow. If that's the only traffic you're getting, Google will take it away. Build up the brand and dominate the real estate. And when I say that, I mean, it, you look at when you search for something like 888 or party poker, it, that front page is just blocked be, be above the fold now. The, the eight box in there, and it'll keep on going. Build community, interact with users, and this I'll come a bit more into the interaction with users because I think a lot of people got sold into social media um, kind of falsely along the lines. Way to improve presence, it doesn't work in every category. AdWords is awesome for delivering traffic, we all know it's damn expensive, and we also it knows it doesn't work in organics. With the Google funnels that they brought out into analytics, we can actually see now that what was first click, what was second click, where was the interaction point. We do see that AdWords does build brand and it will deliver organic brand traffic. That is good in our industry. Google Shopping, really hard from the casino point of view, but pharmacies are rocking this world at the moment. Google News and RSS. Um, as long as the US keep messing up and banning websites and making the news and stuff like that, we'll always have Google News to rely on. Blogs are great, it adds personality. There's a lot of who are between, should I put it on a subdomain, should I put it in a subfolder? At the moment, the way that these things are getting hacked, I'd put it on a brandblog.com and just keep it totally separate and then hopefully the brand terms will kick in and you'll get the indentations below there. Videos and images, people love that sort of stuff user-generated content you can't go far wrong if you're using reviews on your website look at micro formats the CTR on that in organics is through the roof it's it's crazy and user-generated content in AdWords is even crazier uh, Twitter Facebook this this is your pre-sell here to social media these are all the things you should be doing you should have stumble you should have LinkedIn there's millions of websites out there wrong fit your niche if you can't tweet out and, and make sure that you interact with the people that are following you on Twitter that aren't bots, then don't have a Twitter account. Don't just send RSS there. If you get a negative score on your Twitter account, it's like the kiss of death. What you want is to be an authoritative Twitter user. You want Google to look at your Twitter account and go, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's authoritative. So when you do drop a sneaky link in there, Google follows that link. Uh, Matt Cutts said it a couple of months ago, we noticed about a year ago that if you get enough tweets from enough authoritative people, Google actually use that as a quality signal. It doesn't mean that they, they pass you equity, it means that it's a quality signal. Google is built on these. Links are just quality signals. 
page rank is a quality signal. Facebook interactions, quality signals. Newspapers talking about you, quality signals. Even email to a certain extent. Voucher codes, affiliate schemes. Well, we all love affiliate schemes anyway. Um, I think Groupon's most probably the most toxic at the moment. Sorry, Groupon. Um, but again, merchants do this. Affiliates, merchants should be doing this. Yeah. So just make sure that you aren't destroying the brand and the stuff that you do. Um, I used to be a bad guy when I was an affiliate. I used to always try to rank my affiliate IDs instead of my website. So. That's before the days when merchants realized that they should 301 their internal links. So Google plus one, uh, is it a ranking factor yet or not? And if it is, I can only imagine it'd be such a small percentage. I don't think they can, the fact that you can buy them for less than a McDonald's is a good indicator that it can't be trusted. Um, but I think that it will as the, as the plus database gets bigger and bigger and they can w find out what are bots and what are trusted users. I think that it, it has to in time. I think that once Android in, gets on the case as well and the mobile phones are plugged heavily into your Google profile account, your plus one account and Google reviews, that it, it's a total synergy there that it, it just makes sense. Um, do you need to social media activity to rank better? I don't know. I really wish I could just give you a definite yes or a definite no. I've seen case studies where it's proven that it's been absolutely fantastic. I've got analytics data that shows it's absolutely atrocious. Um, retweets are like signals, yeah. Um, it's it's just there google can see it it's harder for them to see it with facebook but they do see it they see the upstream they see the likes in there um, no followed links on twitter are followed it caused so much confusion the last time i said this if the right criteria is met it doesn't mean that google's going to pass the equity from twitter to you it means that google is going to follow that link whether it's a t.co link into a bitly link into another url shortener link onto your website if you've got authority working, they will follow that authority. They will pass it through. They will use it as a quality signal. If the query term that they're looking at is QDF, query deserves freshness, Twitter, you don't get much fresher than Twitter, then you will get a boost in the organics. It will slide back. You've got to keep on top of it. Okay, so one of the things that I get asked all the time is, if I was building a site from scratch today, where would I start, what would I do? And I thought, well, I'm gonna be honest, yeah? I'm not gonna say that everyone can do this because they can't. You can, but you can't. Um, because people kind of get crazy. They think the first thing they need to do is monetize it. So the first thing I'd do is I'd go out and buy a, a domain that had equity already. I'd most probably I'd want to spend around about 20 grand, I think. And I think that if I'm buying something for that value, I'm not buying something which is keyword rich, I'm buying something which is just a brandable, whether it's zippy.co.uk, you know what I mean? I don't care what it is, but I want it to have equity. I want to have someone who's owned it previously have taken care of it. I don't even care if it's in my industry or not. It's just got to have equity. I'd build a nice clean website and I'd aim for authority. The brand of the domain will help that. I'll have a few newspaper links, but I'd really sort of like push heavily to make sure that my PR motions were down the line were very structured. No monetization at all. I don't want to monetize the site. I don't want to make money out of it. I've made plenty of money in the past. I'm building a site for the future. So at this moment in time, I'm, no ads, no AdSense, no nothing. It's just going to be a website out there that is building authority. Whatever industry I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna do a massive amount of keyword research. I'll spend weeks, if not months, doing this. And then I will get into Google News. Once I'm in Google News, I will set up triggers for anything that my keyword research says, is there a Google News one box? If there is a Google News one box, I will get my follow the sun writers to make sure that whatever area of the world that that news is getting triggered for, my writers are pumping that information out. I want people on the ground. And that's not as expensive as it seems, that. You know I mean, you can get decent local writers in a, 
Odesk, I guess, would be the place I would... I use Odesk, so I can't vouch for it any more than that. We're getting good follow the sun writers. I want editorial team internally, but I would have external writers out there. And I'd set up, like I say, the triggers to get them... I want it out there as quick as humanly possible. Once I'd got a bit of traction, I'd start mixing in a bit of social elements. I'd most probably actually have a, an in-house person on Twitter interacting with everybody. I'd look for news aggregator partners. The key there is partners. That does not mean go and give my RSS feed to anybody. Yeah? My RSS feed is going to be a summary feed. I'm not going to give all of my content out there to anybody. I will have honeypots on there, which is basically a hidden image that goes, so if anything follows that image, then I get their IP address. They can't access the website anymore. It's as simple as that. It's blocked in robust.txt, so the search engines shouldn't follow it, and everyone should be happy, happy, happy. I'd run that until I got about 20,000 visitors a day. That's easily achievable in the world that we live in. I continue to engage in social media. That will never leave my side. It will never leave my arsenal. And the one f arsenal, <laughs> arsenal. Um, and I start monetizing the news articles once I'd got to this good user base via Ajax. So the Google News never gets them. When people land on the site, the offers will just magically appear to them and wish people would click on them. So I don't want my offers getting syndicated out. That would never happen. Um, and Ajax at this moment in time really is your friend. Um, and then I'd go for a big heavy PR push. I'd most probably taken an investor from somewhere that was crazy, you know what I mean? Like one of the ex Yelp directors or someone like that. Someone who you can actually go out and say, I've got a name. This name here now is working. Even if it's just I'm paying for the name, 10% of the company, there you go, you do nothing, you're just a front man. But it gives me the PR push, it gives me the thing that anything that's happening in the world of casino I can go to this guy and say I need your opinion on it give me the opinion and I can push that out via the news wise an authority yet again once the authority has been built then I push for the singles I push for casino online casino bingo online bingo play bingo free bingo all the short tail stuff I used to always build for the short tail and let the long tail come naturally totally upside down now I build for the long tail because that's where people stay longest. People that search for online casino are clickers. They click in, they look, they back out, they click in, they look back out. When the, the, the URLs were getting stolen from Kentucky, people were researching this. They wanted to know what the hell happened. Will I get caught up? Who did get caught up? What happened to poker stars? What happened to this? People stayed on the website. That's your long tail search queries. So, some survival tips. Um, traditional SEO, it's never been stronger than it has been today. You know, good titles, good H1s, good written content. That's new, bit of social media activity, but keep it real. Don't employ an agency to do it for you. If you can't be bothered to do it yourself, don't do it, because they won't put the heart that you would. My Twitter feed is me, you know what I mean? There's, I got almost 12,000 people following me. God knows why. I'll tweet about anything. You know what I mean? If, if I'm a Leeds United fan, God forbid, I'll tweet about Leeds. You know what I mean? I'll tweet about camper vans. I'll tweet about SEO. I'll tweet about anything that is me. And that's what Twitter is. It's not a, an RSS feed where you can just scrape people's content and push it into it. It doesn't work. Um, find the footprint that suits you, that really suits your niche whether it be links, whether it be editorial, and, and work hard at keeping that. And finally, what's the future hold? This scares me more than anything. When I saw this deck originally, this, that's Google's image. Don't tell them, because I've, I've mocked it up in a minute, and they'll most probably have me for copyright. And this is how they pushed it, with the, that Google Plus will all be about you and the Google circles, how you'll segment your friends, your family, your passions, your likes. You can create a huddle where you can bring these friends together, you can talk about things, and you can create hangouts and do video. It's awesome, it's fantastic. When I saw it, I thought, you know what? 
this is me and they're looking at Android and they're looking at analytics and they're looking at Twitter and they're looking at Toolbar and they're most probably even reading my Gmail because let's face facts, Gmail is most probably the biggest single indicator of what I'm actually interested in. If I'm emailing somebody about their 1963 camper van, that's not me spamming anything, that's me actually showing I've got a real interest in a product, in a, in a service. They've got Toolbar data that's getting pushed into here. You know what I mean? My YouTube habits. If I'm looking at people on scooters, they can either work out the fact that I, I'm, I've got a scooter, or I've got most probably look at my profile and see that I've got two kids, one nine, one ten. The chances are it's the scooters that I'm interested in for those guys. And if you saw my tweets about scooters recently, I'm not getting a scooter personally. They are for the kids. So you look at all of this, and is this what it works out to be? Is this the fact that this area here is, yeah, I'm at conferences a lot. If, my, if I had an Android phone, they'd even know which bloody conferences I was at any given time. They'd know what restaurants I'd eaten in. They'd know at the moment that I'm in Spain. They'd know that I drink Rioja, because I drink Rioja, you know what I mean? I order Rioja online. If I had a Google wallet, they'd know even how much I, what my br brand is, you know what I mean? How much I even pay for this stuff. They know that I've got a Canon camera because I've linked my Flickr account to my personal account. Flickr gives me data straight away that says, what camera was it taken on? They know when I updated my camera. They'll know how many cameras I've ever had. Once they've worked that out, they can work out what pictures I take a lot of pictures of. They most probably already know that I own two camper vans and I own two camper van websites. They know where my data tracking is. Via analytics, they know which websites I go to. They'll even know which clients I've got. It's not scary at all, is it? When they tie all this together, they can go, that guy of, oops, <laughs> I won't lock fire light into the crowd again. They know that the person over there and the person over there may have camper vans and they may love SEO and they may be in Spain at the same time. And if I search for a restaurant, they may have been to a restaurant last night and left a fantastic review on their Android phone. That would influence me, wouldn't it? Well, it has to because we like the same things. Why wouldn't we like the same food? We have the same friends. We have the same social network. This is serendipity. This is what Marissa Maya talks about, giving everybody here individual search results around them, around the people that they interact with. I'm not going to take advice off my dad about SEO. He sailed ships for like 20 years. What would he know about SEO? But I'd take it about anyone in my SEO circle because I'm going to tag them as SEOs. I'm not going to tag some guy that I met down the pub who's really funny and tells loads of jokes and doesn't skip on rounds. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not interested in him, but I will have him in a social circle somewhere. And they'll be able to see the interaction between me and him, that that's a social environment. They'll be able to see that the influence between me and my wife, me and my kids. They'll be able to look at the kids' responses. They will have this data. And when they've got that, I think that we can't compete. It's an awful thing, but it'd be too individual. The only thing you can do is influence your friends and hope that your friends influence their friends. Um, and the guy who did MySpace, who thought it'd be funny just to get all his friends to like him and wrote a little spider who thought he was going to go to prison for a while. That's how it works. You influence a crowd of people. That crowd of people then go forward and influence another crowd. The crowd keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's why social is important. That's why in using agencies to do your social, if they do it badly without your heart, without your passion, you, it's done. It really is. It's, 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 it's gone forever. And that's me. Any questions or can we all, because it's absolutely frigging red hot. Is See, it half an hour, that's perfect. See, I was trying to make that in half an hour, so I had 15 minutes of Q&A. Absolutely. No, that was fantastic. I mean, you should have written everything down. Can the, are you going get, to get this uh, slide show up anywhere that they could download it? Um, we you, are. You've got it. Yeah, we, um, we're, we're going to have it on the website. I, 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 that? I, I, because that's like probably the most comprehensive, um, I can, I just can step by step. That, that we've had at the conference. So like everything that's on there, just follow it to the letter and you're there. Huh. Looks like you need new glasses. Yeah, I do. They were expensive as well. Yeah. The lens will go, can you grab my lens? That's, so. yeah, it, we, we broke it. <laughs> that's, uh, I don't think that's in the gift. Jason, you have a question. 
Dave, thanks for that. That was actually superb, absolutely superb. But a question to you. If what you're saying at the end actually comes to bear and everything's unique for every individual, results are different and so forth, does that mean that SEO is effectively dead? Now, we've had this conversation a million times in the past, but, but, but what does SEO become? It, it, or is it not about search engines and about understanding people and delivering for what Google are looking for? Yeah, I think that I'm gonna. I don't think I've ever said this in public before. Um, SEO as as a name is kind of like it's crazy. It's it's like saying, "Oh, you're a solicitor. I'm buying a house. I'll use you." No, no, I handle divorce. I don't want to get divorced. I want to buy a house. Well, pick a different solicitor. I mean, aren't all solicitors, lawyers, the same? And SEOs are like that. I'm a technical SEO. I work you know, on HT access files. I work on rewrite rules. I work, that's, that, that's my bread and butter. That's what I do. I'm, looking, I'm a site architect. So uh, from my point of view, I can't see my role changing. I, I, I want the search engine spiders to get in there. I want them to find the content how I want them to find the content. Um, and then you've got on-site SEO which I've, I've got a really good team internally. And, I've, and I've, I'm, I'm not a bad on-site SEO guy, personally. You know what I mean? Being an affiliate, you've got to have a mix of all three anyway. And then you've got off-site SEO, which is your link builders. I think those guys will die. I think that the marketplace at the moment is getting so expensive. And you can see that people spend hundreds of thousands a month on link budget and then get torched. And a site will pop in. And it's only got maybe 20, 30 links, but the brand links and the and, and it's just so much authority there. And like, but they don't even have the anchor text links. It's like, yeah, I know, it's sick, isn't it? And you can see that it's changing, and it's only happening now. You know what I mean? That's what the beautiful thing about it. Um, so I think the SEO, will, technical SEO, on-page SEO will still be around. I think link building. Google's been looking a way to get rid of backlinks as a quality indicator for many years. They can't, you know what I mean? The whole algorithm is based around this. Um, and I think one day we'll wake up and there'll be this big new update. Panda wasn't it. Panda was a, a last of plus trying to clean up the search results. But it'll come, it has to, you know what I mean? I've been saying it long enough, I just don't want to die before it happens. Yeah, you, you, you've been preaching the doomsday prophecy for a couple of years now, we've not seen it yet. but. Um but I do, I do see where you're coming from. But I mean, if you look at Google, and, and if Google's going to survive, it's got to produce the best results for people doing searches. I mean, that's simply your business plan. To do that, you have to get as personal as possible. Now, I know it's a huge pain in the ass for yourself and for any type of uh, person doing links, or a, even any SEO, really, because Google's going to be smarter than what you want it to deliver. It's going to realize what people look at when they, when they go to a website. So, I, I, like you said before, I mean, you're getting down to very old school, let's just yeah. build a good website that does the stuff that the people that we want would like yeah. to use. It's crazy, isn't it? Who, who, who'd ever knew that we'd be back in 1980 all over again? And it is, it, it, I, I honestly feel as an SEO that, and I don't think that I've reached the top of my game yet, but as an SEO, I really feel that we have come full circle. Google never spoke about backlinks. They've always spoken about signals. And the more signals that they've got, the better their algorithm. And I think what they're looking at now is signals that are, are far further reaching away than what links this website's got pointing to it. And site architecture is always going to be important. I mean, Matt Cutts even said in a video, you know, just recently, it's like, if you've got a money page deep down, bring it right up, link from your home page, get it close to that home, make sure that your site architecture is right. You know what I mean? It's like, if, you, if you're an online bingo website, you wouldn't have your home page with like your FAQs, would you? You'd have like play bingo, big button, click here. It's the same with your content, you know what I mean? It's like you, the important content needs to be dragged right up. One of the things that Panda did, um, and this is me now, this is like not what I've read on the internet, this is the way that I felt it happened, was that before you'd inject authority into the top of a website and it would come down like a triangle and the authority would flow all the way through. And Google used to penalize pages if you'd heavily link built, they'd kill that page and you could take it away and throw it away. What Panda did is they started at the bottom and they looked and said, really, how deep is this shit along here? And anything that links to it is gonna get a little bit 
go up th through the channel until you get this whole effect where this crap just flows all the way through because this piece of content here is total utter gibberish you link into it from five pages those five pages move up the food chain all the way to your money page and you anyone who's come out of panda one of the things that they found they had to do was from 120,000 pages down to five they went down to five they lost a lot of long tail but they came back over affiliation where it's like number of affiliate links within the site to the actual content and links on the site high percentile pull it back and again it's this overindulgence you know I mean the, the so panda was really about looking at what the the underlying elements of the, the website was and and going okay if this is crap here why should we trust the home page you know what I mean it's like it may be a pr9 it may be a pr8 but we shouldn't trust that on its backlinks alone because deep down the equity within inside the site it's rotten to the core burn it all and but i mean in the meantime yeah uh, i mean we're saying that you know long tail is more important it's looking more at long tail taking long tail more seriously but reality isn't long tail where we're getting their buying from i mean instead of us getting one percent of one percent of people clicking through and buying what we're trying to sell once you get to be more long tail are you getting a more targeted user group and people who are more likely to action the buy yeah i mean that's good news somewhere in here i mean we we looked at um some of the auto insurance industries and their long tail traffic converts so much better if you're searching for I mean, it's, well brand brand and tail is like the best you, you just don't get any better than that so if if someone searches for 888 bingo 25 pound off offer and they land on 888 bingo website with the 20 pound off voucher right there that converts you know it's 99.9 it's percent .9%. if they're searching for 25 pound off bingo they may click around a little bit if they're searching for bingo it, it's it shrinks again so yeah longer tail is like you really are looking for the i'm looking for a a brand new audi turbo quattro two liter tsi blah 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 you only get to that query once you've done your research so they're much more informed people that's why i said early on i'll go for my long tail any day of the week and then let that build to the short tail um, and long, there's a massive amount of traffic in long tail. Uh, some more questions from the audience? Hold on one sec, I'll be right there. Hey, uh, you spoke about all the Google items like Google News and uh, Google Images and YouTubes. Uh, I, I wanted to know if you have uh, uh, an, an idea about any different fa factors for Google Local for sites that are in the top rankings in the Google Organic but really down behind in, the, in their local listings? So the, the local side of it, um, I had a, a deck on local actually that I, I was thinking about bringing in it. You've, there's quite a few different things. Obviously IP location is the biggest single indicator. So from there, once they've actually filtered down through there, they try to get a blend of business size, as stupid as it sounds. So you'll always find that you will have a not, almost 99% of the time you'll have a national listing within the local uh, I think like the hotel stuff you'll always find that when you look at hotels in city name you will always get someone like I don't know hotels.com appear or XP it's crazy but it, they're just in there um, and not because they've got offices because they've got a, a massive aggregation so you will get that in there uh, postcode is important you have to tick all the right boxes fill as much information as humanly possible on in Google's all of your quest boxes they've got and don't only hit local hit places as well they're both data sets slightly different uh, make sure you update it regularly as well it's a there's a quality signal there how they pick the a b c d and e it still seems to be almost like a little bit randomized I think they look at click-through data um, they certainly look at review data in the UK but it, again it's it's a small indication it, it, at the moment it still feels that it's like these are the 10 localized ones we get i get crazy stuff i'll get like localization from where i live in yorkshire and they'll pick like leeds manchester and london and i'm like what the hell you know what I mean? it's like i'm looking for a coffee i'm not going to drive all the way to london to get it and it's just like so they, they get it so you know that damn it that they're getting it wrong somewhere um but yeah it's really down to ip address localization making sure that all the relevant data points uh, filled in in Google and on the site.
things like title tags, make sure you localise telephone numbers in there. Don't put plus four four in, really bad for mobile. So if, you know, if someone's going to your website, flowers in Barcelona, you don't want the plus zero, whatever the Barcelona area code is, because it's like, you can't click on that. The telephone won't recognise it. Well, Android doesn't anyway. Android will recognise the 01765 local area number, click go, ring straight through. So again, it's little quality signals. Um, being listed in, in the UK anyway, in Yellow Pages or Thompson, seems to give a, a, a fractional boost. Um, but good reviews as well. So reviews, we get aggregators in the UK. We don't have enough Google data of people filling it in. But I think Android will fix that as well. So local is an, an emerging market for them. Although they've kind of, we feel that it's, they've solidified that it's there, it's solid, um, it, it's not, it's still aggregated, it's still flimsy, um, and you can still steal people's rankings. Uh, the other thing that I noticed in local recently was that people's home addresses were appearing for their business addresses. They'd obviously bought in director data within the UK. So they're looking at different data sources all the time. Um, but I still think data in Google, data on page, they have to tie up and obviously just make sure you, your traditional SEO has got all the right pointers. So more, audi more audience questions? You glanced over Google Shopping a little bit. Can you go a little bit deeper into Google Shopping? There's got to be some <laughs> massive opportunities in Google Shopping yeah. because right now it just seems like it's pretty random, it's not well structured, it looks like it, that's the thing to game right now. The, tri the trick with that was if you got like in bed, like when it was Google Base originally, you seem to get like grandfathered in and it, it's like, it's phenomenal. It's like wild, wild west. That's why you get like search by Viagra and you get generic Viagra results in the UK at $6 a pill. I'm like, seriously, this is still going on. Um, you try putting in, an, uploading a new one into the Google Shopping, yeah, they don't like it so much. Um, Google Checkout is a, big thing for shopping uh, they seem to kind of, I don't know why they just boost it um, you need to have really good organic traffic on your brand to get those like really single term ones as well um, but yeah, yeah it's, it's the same make sure you tick all the boxes make sure that your XML doesn't go down um, bad errors in XML is like one of the worst it's like almost like link spamming um, in Google organics they really hate it they hate that fact that the changing URL structure all the time. They don't like that. So XML solid, keep it solid all the time. Um, and what, what is, is the principle in Google Shopping uh, ultimately value? I mean, is it a price compare? Is, is there a dream to make it a price compare site? And if so, um, do we need to go out there and just compete on best offer? I, well, I, no, I think what will happen is the, the, the comparators are on Google's radar. Um, I think the reason why they bought what was it? Com not compare the market. Uh, was it go compare? Is that hey, beat that quote. Beat that quote wasn't because they were buying the tech. I could be wrong. This is just me hypothesizing Google solicitors, okay? Um, I think what they were after there wasn't the infrastructure and it wasn't even the data. It was the deals that they had in place with the insurance companies. And why do you think they want to buy the ticketing software for the airline companies? And the, you, you can, I mean, it may sound like oversimplistic and maybe I'm kind of like a little bit of a cynic to it all, but my gut feeling is Google will roll out a comparator for insurance and mortgages. That's what they bought that company for in the UK. It was the commercial agreements between, between that company and the insurance companies. Um, what, I mean, the only reason why, I mean, you wouldn't spend that much money and leave it penalized. I mean, I still rank number one for the, it, it's brand term, it's ludicrous. You know what I mean? It's like, it drives me, I don't know, six or 700 visitors a day. It's like, anybody want that traffic, feel free. Um, and you look at it, you go, why the hell, if you spent that much money, you wouldn't fix it? You mean, they could easily break the deals with the newspapers that were pushing the links into them. Um, they, they weren't really buying links, in fairness. Well, they, they built partnerships that give them link equity, and they did a few silly things. Um, but realistically, it's a fix that Google could fix, put a press release out and say, yes, they fixed all these problems, done and dusted, rank it back where it was. 
the thing about it is they don't want it to rank. It'll come as a one box. Um, it'll come as integrated search. When you search for uh, credit cards, it'll be a credit card page. The same as we get local maps, you'll get local credit card pages coming up with offers and best deals. Mortgages will be the same. And what worries me is that if Google ever think, well, you know what, why don't we just go full steam ahead and buy a friggin' casino? You know what I mean? That'd be awesome. Then if anyone searches for casino, we'll just give them a one box where they can play casino. That'd be so easy. Just get rid of all of these other competitors. I mean, that's how disruptive they are. I could never imagine them doing that. Um, but I can see them killing off the affiliate. I mean, they don't know how to handle us. They really don't know how to handle affiliates. Um, I've had many sort of like secret hush hush meetings um, with people from many search engines. They don't know how to handle affiliates. They see us as doing something that they should be doing. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, we shouldn't be, you I mean, we, as an affiliate, we're telling Google which are the best websites to play the best games. Google should already know that. And it's, a, you know what I mean? And that's their mentality. You know what I mean? Whichever way we argue about it, we're not going to change their mentality. That's just the way that they think. Um, you know, I mean, it's like one of my friends, when I, the first time I ever went to Google, I met Larry and Sergey, and Sergey turned around to one of my friends who'd made millions in the porn industry. And Larry turned around to him and said, don't you think there was something better you could have done with your life? And he's like, what, well, I'm a millionaire, and people look for porn. If you're not going to supply it, I will. And he was like, we should do a better job. And Sergey was like, so it's kind of weird that it's that interaction that, that they don't want to touch it, but they don't want us to touch it either. It's the same as a the casino. They don't, want, they don't know what to do with it from the affiliate point of view. So well, it's, it's scary. It's lovely to be in a business where some people are excluded from being in that business on moral grounds. I mean, it's like yeah. you're kind of granting this oligopoly to uh, people who just want to be in that space because they might be precluded. I mean, Google's investors could preclude them from certain things. It's, it's quite common that gaming companies can't be invested in by various uh, yeah. asset management groups, literally because, um, because there's requirements from some of their investors, whether they pay, be pension funds or whatever, not to invest in gaming. So it's brilliant. It, it's yeah. like it, it limits the market from people like Google. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and the I mean, it's like, um, can anyone remember in the UK, Dragon's Den, when um, bingo alerts got sold? And it went for 200,000. I built that. I was the SEO. That was all my doing. I was like, yay, we'll get them on TV. It'll be awesome. And they bought it. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. And then they, 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 then they got in their own link building guy because he's awesome. And then they got it banned, which wasn't so awesome. Um, and then I had to go down to London and have a meeting with them. They're like, can we fix this? And, but we want you to go on a total rev share. And I'm like, so you want me to be the guy who fixes all this on a rev share on a site that I built the site that I promoted, why don't I just do it myself again? And he was like, yeah. And they basically, that's when they went to be an operator and, and left it, so, yeah. So it, VPs get caught every now and again. Sorry, Theo. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, actually, I, I, I worked on that one as well. I didn't know you were involved in that. But when they went to the Dragon's Den, yeah. uh, we had a couple of meetings before, and my, I did my MBA, I focused on iGaming, but I mean, basically the course was entrepreneurship a new business. So um, I said, well, here's how you're going to get your, here's how you're going to win. They can't refute yeah. any of this data. You're going to win. Of course, the site didn't really work, but they didn't ask me to make the site work. Yeah. They asked me to Look, get well, money from dragons. Well, the flip side of it is, was the stinkers thing that was the, the only USP, which if the dragons actually looked at it, they would have seen that no one was actually using it. So we should all go to Dragon's Den and just get free <laughs> money. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm round of applause. Dave Neller, he's always wonderful. We're always so happy to have him.